Alright then gang, so in this video I want to start to animate these items onto the page inside the list because currently they just pop onto the screen whenever the app first starts. Instead I want to slide them on from right to left and maybe have some kind of stagger effect so that the first one comes on first, then the next, then the next, then the next with 100 or 200 milliseconds between each one. So there's several different ways we can do this. And I'm going to show you in this video how to use animated list widgets. So right here you can see currently we're creating this list using a list view builder. Now to animate these tiles onto the page, onto the screen, instead we're going to replace this with an animated list widget. So let me first do that, animated list. And now inside this, we need to update some of these different properties. Before we do that, let me spell this correctly, animated list. And this property right here, this item count needs to be instead initial item count because at some point there might be different amounts of items, right? It's not always going to be the same amount of items. We might take items out, add items in, etc. So this is going to be initial item Count. So when the app first loads, how many items are going to be there? Now we also need to update this item builder right here to have a third argument and that is going to be an animation argument which we can access then inside this thing over here. So now we've done that, we need to also update a couple of things at the top. So if we scroll right to the top, currently we have this global key right here. Now this is for a normal list. We need to turn this into a key for an animated list. So let me get rid of this and replace it with this. So now we're still using a global key. It's called the same thing, but this time we have this type associated with it. It's an animated list state. So it's a special type of global key for animated lists. So now we have that set up, we can work on the animation of our list items. So I'm going to scroll back down to our widget tree down here where we return currently the trip tiles. Now instead I want to wrap this inside a transition widget, in particular a slide transition widget. And this is going to allow us to slide on the individual list items when we're building them right here. So let me for now get rid of that and instead I'm going to return a slide transition widget, okay? So inside here, we need a couple of different properties. First of all, we need a child property, and this is actually going to be the thing that we're trying to transition on. Now, that was the thing we just deleted, which is from the trip, tiles, and then index. So remember, we get access to index as we cycle through the trip tiles. And if we recall, the trip tiles is the list of widgets right here. Starts completely empty, but then inside init state, we add the trips, we cycle through this list of trip objects, and we add a new widget to this list for each trip object by passing it into build tile. This returns a list tile. So all we're doing is outputting a sequence of tiles right here, but we're wrapping them in a slide transition so that for each one, ultimately we're gonna slide it onto the page. Okay, now we also need another property and that property is going to be the position property. So when we're using a slide transition, we're basically transitioning the position of something on a page. And to do that, we use a special type of tween. And this tween is gonna be an offset tween. So what I'm gonna do is just paste this up here. I'm externalizing this tween so we don't have to write it out all here inside the position. And all we're doing is creating a tween which is of type offset. I'm calling it underscore offset and I'm setting it equal to a tween. All I do is specify that the beginning is this offset and the end is this offset right here. So an offset basically determines the offset of a widget in both the X and Y directions. Now a value of zero in any given direction means that it won't have an offset at all. And a value of one in a given direction means it will be offset by either the widget's full width or height depending on the direction of the offset. So if we give our list items and offset in the X direction of one, it means it's going to be completely off the page over here by the width of the list item itself, which is the full width of the screen. So it's going to start way over here to the right of the screen, right? In the Y direction, there's no offset. So it stays where it is vertically. And that's the beginning position, right? Off the screen. Now the end position, what it's going to tween to is zero, zero. So it's rightful position right here, zero offset. 
So we're creating this tween so that we can transition from over here off the screen to on the screen. And now we're going to use that down here inside the position property. So right here, we can use this animation property that we get. And from that, I'm going to say dot drive and we're going to drive an animation using this offset right here. That's all we're doing. We're taking an animation and we're driving it using this offset. And that basically controls this slide transition for us. So now this child is going to be transitioned onto the screen. Now, currently this won't work and I can demonstrate that if I refresh, then it's not going to work over here, right? They don't animate on. And that's because we first have to tell Flutter every time that we add a new tile over here, we also need to update the current state of the global key to say we've added a new item. And that way Flutter can keep track of the items added to the list and animate them. So let me do this. After we've added a new widget to the trip tiles, let me also update this thing right here, the global key current state. So we do that by taking the list key that we have, this thing right here, and getting the current state and then using the method insert item. And in here is the index of the item that we've inserted. So to begin with, if we add a new item to this list right here, it's gonna be at position zero, right? So we take the length of the trip tiles, which will be one, because we've added one item, and we minus one to get that index of zero. And we do that for each one. So if we've added two, and it's the second widget, the length is two minus one, which is one. And that is the index of the second item we've added to the list of widgets, right? So now we're telling the current state in certain item. And this allows Flutter to understand from this key right here, the global key, when to animate in a new item. So we've done that, but again, this still won't work. So if I save it and refresh over here, you're still going to notice that this doesn't work and we actually get an error. And it says the method insert item was called on null. And that's because we're trying to access the current state before the build method even runs and registers this thing right here with the list. So to combat this, we should only call the function after the build method has run. Now to do this in Flutter, we can use a special method. So what I'm going to do is copy something and just paste it up here. Then I'll explain it. So inside init state, I'm going to paste in this thing right here. So widgets binding dot instance dot add post frame callback. And this takes in a function. And basically all we're doing is saying, okay, we want to fire this function right here only when this build method has run right here. So we're waiting until that's run. And then inside that we're firing add trips so we can remove it from here. So we know now when we're firing this thing right here, it's only going to fire after the build method has run. So at that point, we know that we have a current state. So this is a nice little thing we can use to make sure that the build method has run on a widget before we do something. So you can copy this to your cheat sheet for Flutter if you want. Widgets binding dot instance dot add post frame callback takes in a function which will fire after the build method has run. So now if I save this, fingers crossed, this should all work and we see them all slide onto the page. So if I refresh or restart, we can see that again, they all slide onto the page, which is quite nice. So that's cool, but they do all animate in together. Now, I'd like to stagger them a little bit. So in the next video, I'm going to show you a trick we can use to do that.